Ladies and gents, I'm Rusuji Reacts and this is Building a Mars Base is a horrible idea. Let's do it. By the channel Kuz Gazad in a nutshell. Get your Mars Base poster here. Okay. Humans love to explore. Strangely enough, even horrible places like Mars. Let's see how building a Mars Base could work and how insanely nerve-wracking exactly it would be. Yeah, this. <laughs> I mean, look, as a science advancing thing, populating other planets is great. But people are actually thinking that it's going to be fun living on Mars. No, it's not going to be. Is it fun living in deserts? Go in the central Sahara Desert and survive there for a month. Would you like that? Yeah, Mars is going to be 50 million times much worse than that. First of all, if we build any base on Mars of any kind, people think this, this is going to be some of the Star Trek type of thing. That's some kind of a dome, glass type dome. That is over some kind of a city and we just walk outside yeah even if that happens that's gonna take extremely long time for something like that to come it will it will probably be you know uh, some kind of a you know uh, some kind of a small uh, tent type of not tent some type of a you know cube cubicles type of thing right some type of a, you know sw uh, small you know living spaces where you're crammed into basically uh, not much, you can't walk outside, even if you do, it's pretty costly to go outside with suits and everything. And, you know, it's not going to be a vacation space, let's just say. I mean, the temperature would be immensely low, I guess, you know, way below freezing temperature. But you, I think temperature inside craters is, I guess, fine enough, even though it would be cold, I think fine enough. So maybe if you create base inside crater... They'll be fine, but still, the radiation is going to be a thing even there. So, I don't know. Yeah, but I would never go and live on Mars until the technology comes where there are dome-type things that just makes it, you know, living on Mars just awesome. You can just walk outside, see the sun, see all the things in the sky without any space suit because there's a dome on top, a transparent dome type of thing. If that's the case, I would go there. Otherwise, no, I'm not going there. So yeah, Mars base. It will be a thing, obviously. Scientists will love shit like that. I mean, there are scientists who live in the, you know, Antarctica, uh, so why not here? Even though it would be much worse, but still, same type of thing. Yeah, there are lots of people who are signing up to go to Mars with, you know, all the SpaceX thing. That it's going to be fun. No, it's not going to be fun. Let's watch this one. Remember, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe. Check out the reaction ID. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards. Well, please check out the end cards. And yeah, let's watch this one. From hostile deserts to lonely islands and the highest mountains, wherever there is space to expand into, humans do so. So, it's hardly surprising that we're already making preparations to set foot on Mars and to create the first permanent colony outside of Earth, maybe even terraform another planet and turn it into a second blue home. But wait, before we can get to the nice future stuff, we first have to complete the second phase of colonization, creating a semi-permanent outpost to prepare the ground for a larger human presence. But doing so will be gruesome. Even for an expansionist species like us, Mars is extreme. At first glance, Mars seems familiar. Polar ice caps, large valleys, liquid water under its surface, and a day barely longer than Earth's. The ideal place for us to go. Unfortunately, Mars is actually a cold, radioactive desert where the ground is poisonous and breathing is impossible. Mars is awful. You almost certainly don't want to go there. The pioneers doing the hard work on Mars will have an intensely stressful life filled with incredibly challenging problems. <laughs> the way Kiss Kiss said is awful. <laughs> I can I can feel the resentment right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, as with the SpaceX thing, look, all the people, all the millionaires who are signing up thinking it's going to be fun. Yeah, th th those people are going to be extremely disappointed. But people like scientists, yeah, th this is challenges like this is what they live for. It's it's about right. But you know, as going there, living there, it would be extremely horrible. That's for damn sure. Not to mention the gravity is, I guess, sixth of the you know of what we have here. So I I don't know. Uh, we we would need intense exercise if we want to keep up with our bone structures and everything. Extremely thin atmosphere. So yeah, no never encountered before. But there are plenty of people willing to do that work, and we have the technology to enable them to do it. 
For this video, we will assume there have been prior missions to Mars to scout out a good place for an outpost, store resources and equipment, and that there's already a moon base that serves as a hub for Mars missions. The first major challenge for our outpost is the fact that Mars is very energy poor. Because of its distance from the Sun, solar power is only 40% as effective as on Earth. But even this weakened sunlight is often obscured for days by enormous dust storms. Solar power alone will probably not be enough. Alternatives such as wind power and geothermal energy are also unfeasible as there's hardly any atmosphere and Mars's interior is much too cold. Initially, nuclear technology might be the only option. Yeah. Since Mars doesn't have easily accessible radioactive elements, the nuclear fuel needs to come that's why I think nuclear energy is one of the best energy there is because it could work anywhere because it's literally like, you know, creating a small sun to, you know, take energy out of. I know it's a fission, not fusion, but still. From Earth, along with the reactor. If we do set it up, it could power our small outpost for the first few years. Unfortunately, all that energy won't be very useful if we can't breathe. Mars's atmosphere is only 1% as dense as Earth's and mostly made up of CO2. So our habitats need to be pressurized and filled with an artificial atmosphere made of nitrogen and oxygen, which comes with more problems. Corners and flat walls are weak points, so the habitats will have rounded and smooth shapes to handle the stress of great pressure differences between the interior and exterior. The airlocks need to be very so airtight. So all those, you know, sci-fi TV shows of the past, those this kind of, a, you know, futuristic, you know, cubicles and things where they are round. I guess they are not so far off, right? I mean, that that is real science behind it. You need that round shape for the pressure. Tight and work perfectly every time. Without an extensive magnetosphere or a dense atmosphere, half of all radiation coming from space reaches the ground. A person on the surface would be subjected to 50 times the radiation that they would be on Earth. Three years on the surface of Mars exceeds the radiation dose limits imposed on NASA astronauts for their entire career. This increases cancer risks significantly. To prevent that, we could shield our habitats with a thick layer of frozen CO2 that can be harvested directly from the atmosphere. Covering the dry ice with a meter of dirt would further increase the level of protection. Sadly, this means almost no windows. What? From the inside, most living spaces will be... I mean, not necessarily, right? With the latest technology, you could put small cameras there and create some kind of LED screen inside and just mimic the window. It is a live feed, so it is like a window. You don't have to have a physical window, right? Extremely small hole, just small camera there and just put a big ass LED inside, OLED or something which is extremely thin, it could work as a window. Look at that, that's a window. But still, that's a really effed up situation. I don't know. If I were in that situation, maybe a few days after that, I would start to panic. It would feel really weird to me, you know, stuck inside something like that. Be windowless tunnels. From the outside, they'll look like burial mounds. All of this would still not hold back all the radiation, but reduce it just enough to be survivable for long periods of time. It won't, however, protect anyone who ventures outside. So remote-controlled robots will be used for routine work on the surface while our crew stays inside. Staying inside is a good idea for another reason, Mars dust. It's mummy, you know, people can use space suits, right? Why not? Just like they would use, you know, when they landed on the moon, they're using, you know, while well, they're repairing international space stations and things like that. Why not use that? much finer than dust on Earth, so it could find its way into the gears or electronics of our machines. Because it's also very dry, it's electrostatically charged, sticking to everything, like spacesuits. It would be impossible to avoid carrying lots of Mars dust into our habitat and into the lungs of our crew. To make this even worse, Mars's soil is filled with very toxic perchlorate salts. Constant exposure could be deadly. What? This problem can still be overcome, though. Space suits, for example, could be made in a way that they never truly enter the base, but stay attached to the outside. Oh, like the new lunar vehicle that the NASA created, which is something like that, which is, you know, space suits are attached like that, that you can just enter from inside to outside and just walk off. Oh, I mean, that would work. But damn, look at that, even the dust is dangerous, masters. ...side of the habitats. 
Okay, great. Now we've safely isolated humans in terms of energy and air and protected them from cancer, we just need to feed them. Water is easy to come by if a settlement is positioned near the Martian poles with their thick layers of ice. Growing food is a different kind of challenge, though. Mars's soils are alkaline and lack the vital nitrogen compounds that plants need to grow. Before we can grow anything, we will have to decontaminate the soil, which is difficult and expensive. Yeah, but what about Matt Damon's poor potatoes? Then the soil can be fertilized using recycled biological waste. All of this will take a lot of time and is very energy intensive. So we might use aquaponics to raise fish and plants together, making the astronauts' diets more varied and tasty at the same time. This will be an important psychological boost for our overworked crew. All of these things don't solve one fundamental problem though. Mars has only 38% of Earth's surface gravity, which could cause muscle wasting, bone loss and cardiovascular problems. While this might be solved in the future by setting up rotating living spaces, for now our crew has to live with low gravity and exercise a lot to slow the degradation down. The crews will probably have to rotate every... Okay. That is a wrong exercise. This is the right exercise. You need a massive weightlifting to counter, you know, that gravity difference. I mean, yeah, you need cardio, but that's, you need that anywhere. Specifically for this environment, you need massive weightlifting. ...eyes a lot to slow the degradation down. The crews will probably have to rotate every few years. After being stuck indoors in tight spaces without windows, with the same people, performing the same routines day in, day out, with little contact from the outside world, and a lot to worry about. Like Antarctic scientists or submarine staff, they will undergo intense psychological screening to make sure they're mentally resilient enough to handle this lifestyle for... See, that's the thing right there. The, the people who, you know, like, I don't know who was that was. The astronauts that went to, you know, the moon. You know, they were given certain tests that, you know, certain situation where people would panic. These astronauts did not panic at all. Like, you know, uh, one of the... Something didn't launch properly. I don't remember exactly. I kind of, you know, someone remembers something didn't launch properly when, you know, uh, the, the, basically they were about to land on the moon. So, you know, the guy, you know, the astronaut had to do it manually. At that time, the astronaut, astronaut didn't panic at all. His heartbeat was extremely stable, ice cold. Even though he knew that something went wrong and I have to manually, uh, you know, do something. I don't, I don't remember exactly something like that. I have to research it. But, you know, somebody needs to be extremely stable. Uh, millions of psychological tests and things like that. Like, a guy has to be extremely strong mentally to go there on the Mars. People think, yeah, yeah, let's, just, let's just sign up. Let's go to SpaceX, talk to Elon Musk and sign up to go to, you know, Mars. No, no man. You're not going like that, you know, uh, the vacation spot is not open yet, all right? Right now, any people who go to Mars is going to be like, you know, like, you know, strong astronauts and things like that. Several years. Establishing the first real infrastructure on Mars will be extremely taxing work that only a group of very determined and competent people can do. Yeah. Luckily, we have enough of these on Earth. And there you have it, a small Mars base that will survive for at least a few decades. As long as it's getting a constant supply of resources, parts, nuclear fuel and crews from Earth. Unfortunately, Mars and Earth are separated by millions of kilometers and orbital periods that leave only a narrow travel window every two years. If there's an emergency in the colony, Earth wouldn't be able to help until the next yeah. travel window opens. Helpers may arrive on a planet filled with corpses. Settling Mars Seriously, will you can't even send a signal like, we need help. It will take 20 or 40 minutes, depending where the position is, to reach it. ...be the toughest challenge we have ever faced. It will be gruesome work to establish the infrastructure we need. But we're stubborn, and we like extreme challenges. If we push through phase two of colonization, anything is possible. Yeah. Cities illuminating the dark Martian night, a hub for travel between the planets, industries setting foot in orbit, terraforming, a true multi-planetary future. Going to Mars is hard, but worth it. And if we're lucky, we might be around long enough to see it happening 
and cheer on the people who take on these challenges. Yeah, look, if, uh, you know, uh, creating bases and creating this vacation spot, if that becomes reality, the one, th one place I really want to go is one of the moons of either Saturn or Jupiter. Because I want to see that, you know, standing on the moon, looking up, if I can stand on the moon and looking up to, you know, seeing Jupiter or Saturn, whatever. Even though how we are going to go around the massive radius and that these gas giants are going to put out. But if we figure that out and we can actually stand there, I highly doubt that's going to happen in my lifetime. But if it happens, it will be an awesome sight, just, you know, standing on top of the moon, looking up and seeing that gigantic gas giant on there. Damn. For the benefit of us all. Figuring out complex stuff is one of the best feelings ever, especially if you don't have to do it all by yourself. Our friends from Brilliant can help you out with that part. Yeah, people, go to brilliant.org for slash nutshell and support this channel. Yeah, Mars base. When it happens, it's going to be awesome. But if it fails, that means it didn't fail at the scale like few people died. No, it fail, it's going to fail at the scale where many people are going to die and lots of money is going to be wasted. If that happens, then the, you know, basically less out is going to be at the scale that NASA's budget is going to get cut extremely heavily. You know, it's like, you know, everybody's just going to shun the, you know, space trial and everything. It's going to be bad day for anything science related. So let's just hope that, you know, NASA and anybody, SpaceX or anyone is really prepared to go to Mars and nothing goes wrong. Because if something goes wrong, that's really bad for the future. Because that's an excuse that lots of politicians need to say, fuck that, no more funding. Raw people that was building a Mars base is a horrible idea. It's not a horrible idea, it's horrible living space to be there, I guess. I don't know, it's, yeah, it's, it's specific scientists, specific astronauts should do that. And it's great for science. It's a frontier and without frontier, science cannot move forward. Like going to the moon was a, such a big deal that 30 or so percent of the GDP of the entire world is because the people went to the moon. So, you know, frontier is extremely needed. You're trying to, you know, make Mars livable. Just, you know, researching that will probably, you know, yield some technologies that gonna, you know, spearhead our technology even more forward. Maybe in just few decades, we'll have something that we can't even dream of right now because people are trying to make Mars livable. So who knows? Right, people, that was building a Mars base is a horrible idea by the channel because in a nutshell. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction, and there's a link in the description. Check out the cards, or please check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.